Hey y'all, this is uh, Sean Bergen. Uh, today is the uh, 22nd of November, and this is my midterm reflection for uh, global art history uh, for Professor Elisa Schriebman. My connection topics is the altered states of consciousness. My thesis is that people enjoy altering their states of consciousness for various reasons, and it's a normal human tradition that has been with us all throughout our existence. So the first piece I'm going to show you guys here of my four objects is this polychrome vase from Mayan culture. It specifically just says Mesoamerican here, but based on the glyphs, which are distinctly different uh, than um, other Mesoamerican cultures, this is a Mayan thing. Not, not too much details here, unfortunately, describing the background of this piece. Basically, the, what is described here is a palace drunken party. It could be ceremonial as well, based on the, the outfits that the people are wearing. These instruments over here indicate that music is being played, and they're passing this ceremonial bowl around. So it could be more than a party, and it could, it could be both a party and a religious ceremony, too. The Mayans and many Mesoamerican cultures, those weren't mutually ex exclusive activities. The centerpiece here, you can see a dwarf, they're drinking. What they're drinking specifically is out is not entirely directly stated, but um, it is implied. You see, I say honey is fermenting in the narrow-necked olas, basically like a vase, you know. And, and so fermenting honey is, is typically called mead uh, in modern times demonstrates that the Mesoamerican cultures had alcohol and used it at their parties or ceremonies. This particular piece doesn't have a set date, as like I said, there's not that much background on it, but it could be from 15,000 BC to 1521 AD, so anywhere from 3,521 years ago to 500 years. And so that's the Mayan polychrome base. And polychrome, for those wondering, uh, mean poly meaning many. And chrome meaning color, so it just means it's a multicolored base. It doesn't specify what materials were made to paint with or what the pottery itself was made out of. The next one here is the Selenus and Sadars with Dionysus and uh, Adriani, uh, which is the wife of Dionysus. Starting on the left here, this is uh, this resembles Selenus, and these are supposedly other satyrs, and this is a satyr wearing a mask with a crazy face. And I mean, they say that they're satyrs. We don't actually see their feet here. And they typically, you know, satyrs have the, the lower halves of goats. But since they're wearing these togas, we can't actually tell that they are. But based off of the imagery, that's what they, they believe these beings to be. And so this is supposed to be Dionysus here. And that's supposed to be his wife here that he's resting on the lap of. And you could tell by his face that he's clearly on something. <laughs> or he has been on something for quite some time. And it has a permanent effect on him. And I, I believe they identify him as Dionysus by his staff here. Very specific kind of staff. As you can see, they, they are sharing a communal drink here as well. Most likely alcoholic based off of the mythology of Dionysus. Now this actual piece here was found in the Villa of Mysteries. Villa of Mysteries was in the city of Pompeii, which was preserved pretty well after Mount Vesuvius exploded and covered the whole city in magma. They actually found two bodies, a wife and one of her children in this villa and so this is actually one of a series of frescoes and they're not entirely sure if it's an initiation into the mystery cult of Dionysus or a woman getting married could be both we don't we don't know for sure but this specific piece was made 60 to 40 BC which is approximately 2071 years ago. I believe that that kind of goes to show with what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, they're altering their state of consciousness, even though these may have not have been actual figures, but mythological figures. But the point is people were drinking alcohol back then and they had even a DD dedicated to it many, 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 many years ago. All right, this is my next object. This is the uh, north side of the west wall of Knox Offering Chapel. Uh, this is a facsimile. It's not the original. It is tempera on paper. This was located in Thebes in Egypt. The original was. And then this facsimile was made in Luxor, Egypt. So a facsimile means it's a copy. 
of the original. This is not part of the temple wall. This is copied from the temple wall for the sake of preservation of culture and I guess easy transportation as well. There's a lot going on in this imagery here. You got your members of royalty here on the left and, and tribute and the scene appears to be them showing the people gathering the tribute um, for the royalty. This, this is a number of interesting things going on. They appear to be trapping these birds here, these commoners. They seem to have some the whole family involved here, some women here, some children here, and another guy. I don't think he's actually doing anything. And this woman has her breast out for some reason. I don't know if that facilitates hunting at all. And this one is holding uh, a little duck. Maybe not everyone's being productive, but you know, it, it shows the various methods of uh, the trapping the fowl, uh, plucking the feathers, bringing the fish, bringing the grapes, all to this royalty here. But the most important and why it's featured here as part of my thing on Altered States is this scene right here with them picking the grapes, right? And putting them in this well and stomping it with their feet. It's coming out here in this little side and this guy is gathering it up and putting them in these, uh, these vases. That goes to show that the Egyptians had wine and drank wine and it was important enough to document the process and uh, who, was the, who was the recipient. And so this facsimile was made uh, starting in 1908 and finished in 1914. So this facsimile is, is, is about 100 years old, but the original piece is anywhere from 1410 to 1370 BC, which means that it could be approximately 3,406 years old. And so this one is very specific. It doesn't have a title, but it has a very specific name that is found on the north side of the west wall in the chapel, the tomb of Noct in Thebes of Upper Egypt. It was created under the time of the end of the reign of Amenhotep II in the middle of Amenhotep III's reign during the 18th dynasty, the 12th century, of the New Kingdom of Egypt. This facsimile was made by members of the graphic section of the Metropolitan Museum's Egyptian expedition, and the specific artists are listed here. And yeah, so this ties into my theory of the uh, altered states of consciousness because of this wine here, and, and uh, you know how how the Egyptians used it. Uh, and so let's move on to the next one. Uh, this this will be my final one here. This is Jesus Christ's entry into Jerusalem. It's found at the Church uh, Saint Martin de Vic in uh, France, Central France. Uh, this wasn't known for most of our time here. Uh, I believe it was found in the 80s, covered in plaster. So it had been covered in plaster for hundreds of years. Discovered in the in the late 80s and fully uncovered in 1994. And there isn't much uh, information on this uh, in academia. If you search art store, you'll find maybe one or two pieces on it. But I think it's a very critical piece for Christian or Abrahamic culture. This is one of many paintings of frescoes that were found in the area. It shows some lady being blessed over here, giving some kind of trinket while she kneels down. Jesus and uh, some of his companions here on a very strange horse. And there seems to be a number of oddities here, like um, this strange hand floating here doesn't seem to be connected to anyone so that's a little strange and then you have you know the inhabitants of Jerusalem who are welcoming them or throwing uh, some sort of sheet at Jesus and this guy is holding some kind of stick in his hand and if you look here this is the reason why this piece is so these five mushrooms right here which are quite large uh, compared to the people in the piece. It's known as psilocybe azercense, and that is a psilocybin mushroom, or magic mushroom, as it's commonly referred to. This is a psychoactive or hallucinogenic mushroom, which we rarely see in Christian Abrahamic art, which is, uh, means it's quite significant that it is featured here, based on the nature of how that might be related to how a lot of these religious visions were seen, occurred, may have a lot to do with why it was covered up with plaster for, for hundreds of years. Different than the alcohol I've been featuring, um, but since I brought in my topic to altered states, the substances that bring it on, mushrooms certainly tie into that. And so since it's a part of Abrahamic religion, I thought it was pretty important to feature here. I think that, that that ties into, I think all of this collectively relates to altered states of consciousness and different ways people access them, and how normal it is and, and, and how old it is. You know, you can see it in all these various cultures. So in conclusion, that's my, my video essay. Um, 
hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something about altered states and other cultures or maybe something that you didn't know before.